while the announcement of new content from classic IPs often fills fans with a sense of dread, there's been somewhat of a refreshing twist in a piece of news about one of the latest attempts to expand the Alien saga. Recent comments by Noah Hawley, the acclaimed writer, producer, and showrunner in charge of a new Alien prequel series on FX, have ignited a surprising surge of hope among longtime Alien enthusiasts, leading them to regard the upcoming series with a renewed sense of intrigue and even optimism. In this video, I'd like to unpack Holly's comments and how this is being seen as great news by several previously disenfranchised fans. Like many contemporary franchises that have risen to fame on the strength of their classic stories, the Alien brand has experienced a dilution of its legacy due to more recent divisive entries in the series. The most recent big-screen additions to the Alienverse have faced the heaviest criticism for deviating from the core elements that made the original films Alien and Aliens so iconic. Fans expressed disappointment with these newer installments, citing a lack of the intense, claustrophobic atmosphere and the profound character-driven storytelling that defined the original movies. These new films shifted their emphasis to grand philosophical themes, resulting in a clumsy over-explanation of the fundamental elements of the universe. Thus, both Prometheus and Covenant are seen by many as an unwelcome shift away from the visceral survival horror aspects, leading many to feel that the spirit of the franchise had been muddied and lost. This sentiment has led to a growing desire for a return to the franchise's roots, a longing for the raw, tension-filled plots and dark, foreboding environments that originally captivated audiences. Therefore, the prospect of revisiting the original tone and style of the franchise with a focus on suspense, horror, and compelling characters is a warmly welcomed concept by fans yearning for a revival of the distinct, thrilling experience that Ridley Scott's Alien and James Cameron's Aliens masterfully delivered. At the FX TCA presentation in 2021, FX chairman John Landgraf discussed showrunner Noah Hawley's approach to the new Alien TV series. Landgraf said, quote, I'm a big fan of Alien and Aliens, and I remember watching both of them in the theater and how shockingly original and surprising each of them was in its own way. And so similar to his approach to Fargo, Noah decided to not take Ripley or any character from Alien, except perhaps the xenomorph itself, but go back and figure out what made the franchise so great and so durable in the first place, and see if he could find an experience that felt like walking into a theater and seeing one of those first two movies, where you get caught off guard. In an interview on KCRW's The Business, hosted by The Hollywood Reporter, Holly himself teased such a return to form in both narrative and tone. The showrunner began the interview by attempting to define what the Alien franchise should truly be about, saying, The thing with Alien is that it's not just a great monster movie. It's the story of humanity trapped between its primordial parasitic past and its AI future and they're both trying to kill us. So there's nowhere to go. It's really a story of, does humanity deserve to survive? Does humanity's arrogance in thinking that we're no longer food and its arrogance in creating these AI beings who we think will do what we tell them, but ultimately might lose their mind, is there a way out? There's a moment in the second film, 1986's Aliens, where Sigourney Weaver says, I don't know which species is worse. You don't see them screwing each other over for a percentage. I think there's something really intriguing about exploring humanity and all its goods and evils, and then trying to recreate for an audience those feelings you had in watching those first two films, which isn't easy in a franchise that has had four subsequent films and another film coming out soon, Alien Romulus, but I think I have some tricks up my sleeve. Many fans agree with Holly's view that the core of the Alien universe is best represented by the portrayal of humanity's intense struggle for survival against mysterious and largely unknowable threats. Prometheus and Alien Covenant, while ambitious in their attempts to explore the backstory of the Xenomorphs, arguably lost sight of what truly made the franchise resonate with its audience, the rich, character-driven narratives. 
Holly's commitment to refocusing on the human element of the story is therefore being seen by many as a much-needed course correction or recalibration, marking a departure from the more abstract and at times clumsily executed world-building that has pervaded recent additions to the series. Holly's strategic shift indicates a mindful return to the franchise's original spirit and strengths, aiming to recapture the suspenseful atmosphere and themes that initially captivated fans. When asked about the divisive backstory introduced in Prometheus and Covenant, where the xenomorphs are depicted as bioweapons created by the engineers, Holly said, quote, Ridley and I have talked about this, and many, many elements of the show. For me, and for a lot of people, this perfect life form, as it was described in the first film, is the product of millions of years of evolution that created this creature that may have existed for a million years out there in space. The idea that, on some level, it was a bioweapon created half an hour ago, that's just inherently less useful to me. And in terms of the mythology, what's scary about this monster is that when you look at those first two movies, you have this retro-futuristic technology, you have giant computer monitors, these weird keyboards, you have to make a choice. Am I doing that? Because in the prequels, Ridley made the technology thousands of years more advanced than the technology of Alien, which is supposed to take place in those movies' future. There's something about that that doesn't really compute for me. I prefer the retrofuturism of the first two films, and so that's the choice I've made. There's no holograms. The convenience of that beautiful Apple Store technology is not available to me. This particular notion of Holly's comments have become widely regarded as a highly positive sign by acknowledging that over-explaining the xenomorph's origin diminishes their mystery and allure, Holly underscores the need to preserve the terror associated with the unknown. The Xeno's initial impact was largely due to their enigmatic nature, the sheer fact of their existence, coupled with the mysteries surrounding them, amplified the fear they invoked. Holly's perspective gives hope to fans that the new show will embrace this element of the unknown, focusing less on detailed explanations and more on the suspense and horror that arise from what is left unseen and unexplained. Many feel that his sentiments about capturing the look and atmosphere of the first movie and to portray the aliens as enigmatic Lovecraftian horrors are particularly encouraging. Therefore, a few fans who have been put off by Ridley Scott's most recent films are intrigued by Holly's intention to return to the original's retro-futuristic, rugged tech aesthetic and to reimagine the alien as a truly bizarre and unexplainable entity. Although it remains to be seen whether this series will truly mark a return to the franchise's roots, Holly's approach and mindset have significantly elevated the level of anticipation. His vision for the series has sparked a renewed sense of hope and excitement among fans, eagerly awaiting to see if it will live up to these newly heightened expectations. But I'm curious to know what you think of Noah Hawley's comments about his new Alien series. Do you feel that a return to the aesthetic and human-driven story focus of the first two films is vital to recapture the spirit of the franchise? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And if you're looking for other ways to show your appreciation, you can check out my Patreon page, where members get access to exclusive content and perks. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.